Hey folks and welcome to this video in the Profile Builder series where we'll model and generate context patterns. Now as the welcome screen for the Profile Builder shows, a context pattern is basically a path through a model. Now they're very powerful, they can be used in searches, in tables, in queries, even in defining custom model browsers. But like any purely text-based artifact, they are a bit of a pain to write and maintain. So let's model them. Now to save switching back and forth between the profile builder and the user projects, as we've been doing so far, I've added a few sample network model elements into this project. So I have a couple of servers, you know, because they're tennis players and they serve. Anyway, those have some tags and I also have a printer. Let's create a context pattern. Now, since context patterns don't generate any external files, I'll create a separate profile builder package to model them. That is, of course, optional. Next, I'll create a new context pattern diagram so we can work graphically. Now, let's create a new context pattern and we'll just call it networks. Context patterns are made up of tokens and there are various tokens we can add. Those are all detailed in the help files. The basic token is a model element, which might be a base UML element or a new term. Base elements are, of course, modeled using meta classes. And I could add my own here, but in the profile builder, I have a small library of meta classes. And you can, of course, create your own libraries. Let's drag on project and let's make that context pattern nice and long so we can see the pattern that gets generated, which is held in this pattern tag. Now let's also drag on one of our own new terms. Let's drag on network. Now we can add these elements as tokens to the pattern using this has token relationship. Now the name of that relation will become the name of the token if you generate a table pattern. And of course, you're free to change the names. Search patterns don't have names, so they won't be used in that case. Now we can see the difference right away. If I right click the context pattern and open the profile builder menu, here are the things we can automate with that pattern. Now, whatever option we choose, the profile builder will first generate the pattern and then add it to the tag so it's visible. The first two options here will simply generate the pattern and put it into the copy buffer so you can paste it elsewhere. Then we can generate or update a table layout and also the same for a query. Lastly, we can apply the pattern to a custom model browser. Let's start with copy as search pattern. Now that pattern tag contains the basic pattern project comma network. If I instead copy it as a table pattern, then the basic patterns are the same, but the tokens have names. If you prefer short names, simply change the relationship names. For example, let's shorten network to NW. Then we can regenerate the pattern and we can see the change. Let's deal with queries first. Let's right click that context pattern and we'll select generate or update a query. Now, first, of course, the pattern changes to a search pattern instead of a table one. If I locate the context pattern, it has a dependency to a query, which has the same name initially. That we can see here. If we double click a query in Rhapsody, it runs as a search, but we get no results. Now, this is one of the fundamental differences between search patterns and query patterns. If a search pattern starts with project, it won't work. But if a table pattern doesn't start with project, then it won't work at project level. Let's look at the tags for one of the token relationships, that one for project. There are lots of customization options, all of which are documented in the help. Let's set the occurrence to zero or more. That is, the project might be there, but it doesn't have to be. And that means the pattern will work for both. Now let's update the query and then we'll run it again by double clicking it in the model browser. And there in the search results is our sample network. Now let's expand that pattern out a bit. Let's drag on the server stereotype and we'll add that as a token. 
Once that's added, we'll again update the query with a new pattern, and then we can run it by double clicking it. And there in the search results are the servers. By default, any queries in a Rhapsody model are automatically added to the model browser as filters. So I can already filter this model to show only servers. Now let's create a table. I'll use the same context pattern, but this time I'll choose generate or update a table layout. Again, that gets generated and a dependency is added so it can be tracked. But let's look at the features view for the layout. In the columns tab, the columns are automatically named after the tokens in the pattern, which also has been auto generated. Let's now ask Rhapsody to create a table from that layout. And then if we double click that table, we can open it and view it. Let's modify the pattern. First, maybe we don't want to capture the project. It has to be there, but we don't want to capture it. Let's set that option in the token relationship to false. If I update the layout, since we already have one, we're given options on how to modify it, because maybe we've manually added new columns, for example, and we want to preserve those. In this case, let's replace both the pattern and the columns. If we then refresh the table, that project column disappears. Let's now add tags to the table. Now, the library that we saw doesn't have any tag meta class in it, so let's create one. And then we can add a has token to add it into the pattern. Again, we'll update the table. This time I'm going to select save this choice and don't ask me again. Then I'll switch to the table and I'll update it and we get all of the tags that all of the servers have. Let's change that. Back in the pattern, let's edit the relationship to that tag token. In the name constraint field, I'll type age. Let's update that layout. And once again, we can refresh the table and now we're only getting the age tag. Now you can see how quickly and easily we can create these patterns and indeed use them for searches and for queries, for table layouts, but also for model browsers. This custom model browser for browsing context patterns was generated using that same context pattern generator. If I expand the profile builder and then invoke that same custom browser on the context pattern generator, you can see there are quite a few context patterns in use. Let's locate one and then let's open one of these diagrams here to see just how complex a pattern can get. This top pattern here, for example, has only three tokens, but it reuses another context pattern to add more tokens. And the final pattern is used to generate a custom model browser. Well, that's it for this video and indeed for this introductory series, but it's far from the end. Look out for more videos on some of the more specialist aspects of profile building with the Profile Builder.